the big story tonight is not one that is unexpected. Let me explain and let me hold forth for just a few moments. Viewers, each night on India Upfront, you are virtually accosted by an ecosystem that tells you that there's nothing going right under the Modi administration that the last nine years have been a study in mismanagement of the economy, the purveying of prejudice against minorities, and the insidious management of the headlines by pressuring the media to be pliable and subservient to the government's fakery. That's what you hear night after night. And most often, viewers, it is left to us to sift fact from fiction. And I, of course, try and bring out the fact, viewers, whether I make an impression or not, I don't know. But the endeavor from my side is always to bring out the facts, the absolute facts, and nothing but the facts. Because facts have facts. Time and again, time again, the facts also speak up. And they're so powerful that they dismantle this invidious Latvian's narrative that nothing is going right, that everything is falling to pieces. Today, viewers, is one such day. The National Statistical Office, the NSO, has put out India's GDP figures. The figures, it would be fair to say, have surprised the government itself. That's because growth is robust and more than predicted by the Reserve Bank of India itself. The data coming is sure to deflate the negativists. Primarily because it not just confirms that the economy is accelerating, but also because despite growth retarding headwinds, India is likely to be the best performing economy next year too. There are, of course, viewers, as I told you, challenges awaited. The numbers by themselves will be dissected, and they should be, because that's the exercise. But viewers, at least they go to some extent in addressing those that make us feel bad about where we are. Now, viewers, some of the headline numbers I will bring to you in just a few moments. But the government has even met its fiscal deficit target. Inflation is off the boil also. And I want to put out a three window that sums up my entire introduction tonight. There it is, and let's keep this, only this, on air for a few moments. Because what does it tell you, viewers? What do these visuals tell you? On the one side, that India has beaten expectations, that the narrative that has been driven and forced down our throats by certain individuals is punctured, and that India is now the world's rock star. Add to this better than expected employment data in urban areas. There was a report just two days back, which I will go into some depth. And there's a fair bit to be cheery about. It's not all gloom and doom. Coincidentally, viewers, the numbers are out on a night when a report by Morgan Stanley has said, and I quote, India is different from what it was in 2013. In a short span of 10 years, India has gained position in the world order with significant positive consequences for the macro and market outlook, unquote. Morgan Stanley Research puts the transformation down to 10 big changes that have been made over the last decade. More on that later. But for those interested in numbers, here's a quick glance of the macro data. Let's have a look at it. For the first time, in three quarters, India's GDP grew to 6.1% in Jan-March. Latest quarterly growth numbers significantly higher than expectations. Surge in growth in the last quarter of 2022-23 led by the manufacturing sector. 
for 22-23 as a whole, the GDP growth is pegged at 7.2%. Growth estimate 20 basis points higher than second advance estimate of 7%. The numbers will ease fears of the Indian economy slowing down. Of course, viewers, the caveat must be added that there are headwinds all across the globe. All economies will perhaps be hit. Some have gone into recession. Some of the principal economies in Europe have gone into recession. But despite that, because of where we are placed, we are in a better place, viewers, to resist these headwinds and still grow and still be the brightest spot on the horizon, on the economic horizon. And that's good news. And viewers, let me tell you, let me tell you that just the other day, Union Finance Minister Nirmila Sitaraman was alluding to the upturn in India's economic fortunes and the alertness of the government in anticipating headwinds. Listen in. Beating United Kingdom and reaching the level of fifth largest economy. We were at the 11th position and uh, at the fifth position was UK. Today we've moved upwards and UK has fallen down. So it is a, it's a very big achievement for an emerging market economy. That story by itself is worth talking about and we are still the fastest, fastest growing economy this year and for next year as well. Inflation ka data shayad aapke paas nahi ho. Main aapko spashti karan dena chaati ho. Already wo 4.8 tak pounch rahi hai. Wholesale price index to closer to negative territory. Isi liye hum nigrani rakhenge. Aane wale din mein bhi nigrani rakhenge. Inflation ke upar ek matra bhi humari nigrani kam nahi hoa. Now, several economists have also hailed the numbers, the buoyancy in India's GDP figures. Let's listen in. Now, this is uh, much, much better than any expectation. And uh, uh, we should be happy that uh, when most of the developed economies are uh, willing under the pressure and the fear of inflation looming large on them. Uh, some of them have already slipped into, some European economy have already slipped into recession. Uh, India is turning out to be an oasis of growth. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the talk around the world is of India and India's growth. And this proves one more thing that we are heading in the right direction. It's very encouraging that our estimation is that we are going to have 7.2% plus GDP growth rate in this financial year. As far as the growth is concerned, it will be driven by the consumption because we have huge demand. There is no problem with the consumption. Supply side is also being maintained. So capital formation is also good. We have a uh, major role to play in this case and that is the trade, hotel, transport, communication. So we have so many problems and difficulties in the geopolitical situations, but at least we are going very well. GDP of 6.1% is very, very encouraging. Considering the fact that the global economy is right now facing headwinds, we look at some of the most developed economies around the world. In this situation, I think if India posting numbers of 6.1 GDP is extremely encouraging. I think every citizen of the country should feel proud of the fact that they are part of an economy which is now world's fifth law. Well, India's GDP numbers have beaten expectations and predictions cementing the country's status as a global bright spot. Here's what I mean, viewers, and let's look at the numbers. Growth pegged at 7.2% over oh, the last... Uh, Year 22-23, IMS projection was 5.9%. So that's a, a big jump. RBI's projection was 7%. Even that's been uh, found wanting. World Bank's projection was 6.3%. Viewers, Morgan Stanley Research Report has listed that at least 10 factors have influenced this transformation. It's a coincidence that this report was out today. They talk about supply-side policy reforms. And if you look at those, what is what 
on your screens. It's easy to look at and let me tell you what we are looking at on your screens on the left hand side. It may be a little difficult for you to pick up because the font is small, but we are talking about India's corporate tax, which is at par with peers. In fact, the number which is in red in the middle uh, was uh, a high corporate tax and that was where we were in 2013. And now, of course, the number in the extreme right, which is in a box, is where we are currently. Also, viewers, infrastructure has picked up pace in the last eight years. Look at the growth, the surge. So we are talking about uh, an incremental rise in that number. If you look very closely, you see what I'm talking about. Digital transactions have also gone up. Uh, there on the right hand side, you can see from such a low base where 4.4 percent in FY 2016 today, uh, 76 percent of GDP are digital transactions, which signals the formalization of the economy. GST collections have also been nudging upwards. Uh, let's look at another number. Viewers, social transfers direct to beneficiary. Look at that number, how cash and kind, and I'm talking about a growth from 2013 to 2014, where uh, DBT transfers, social transfers are almost negligible. To look at the number now, in 2022-2023, in cash is the blue bar and in kind is the buff colored bar. And there are many such viewers, many such macro indicators that we can put out there for you to read. Insolvency and bankruptcy code, complete change. Uh, there you can wake out the corporate debt percentage of GDP to moderate to 50% in FY 2023. That's the estimate. And look at the number that's going down. And on the left, you can see the impaired loan ratio at 12 year low. This is the cleanup. Uh, inflation. The finance minister is talking about inflation. Look at that box in the middle of your screens. Double digit inflation back in 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And now, viewers, uh, it's being tamed. It's still on the higher side uh, for anyone's liking, but definitely showing a downward trend. Uh, the decoupling of Fed and RBI policy rate hike cycle, you can see again, uh, viewers, they're looking very good for us. FDI, growth in FDI, there it is, zooming upwards. That's also happening. Viewers, as I told you, there are several such graphs. MNC sentiment is also at a multi-year high. This has not been the case for the last few years. So let's open this up and let me, let me bring in 